A crew that started with just two strangers with ambitious dreams could end up as a Yonko crew with 14 crew members by the end of Wano. Three of those potential crew members are already in Wano and one more could be returning. So in this video, we're going to be discussing what the Straw Hat crew could look like by the end of Wano. We're going to start things off by discussing the candidates and how likely they're going to join. Follow that up by talking a little bit about how these candidates are going to fit into the crew. And towards the end of the video, we're going to talk a little bit about power. So make sure you stick around for that. As always, if you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe and join our King Pirates crew and drop a like if you have a good time watching. All right, but to start things off, we're going to start off by once again going through our straw hat candidates. And longtime viewers of this channel know that I've talked about this topic many times. But I feel like it's been a minute and some things have changed in the manga and some of my thoughts have changed. So let's start off by listing our candidates because that's one thing that hasn't changed because I still think the main candidates for the next straw hat are still Yamato, Carrot, Momonosuke, Tama, and Vivi to return. And the first candidate we're going to start off with is Carrot, who is actually the most popular popular technically according to the popularity poll. She landed all the way at number eight in the most recent popularity poll, which is actually pretty quite crazy to think about it still. But yeah, Carrot from the moment she was introduced, a lot of people have been gassing her up as the next straw hat. If you watch my videos previously, you know that I also like Carrot and at one point I did think Carrot had a chance to be a straw hat. And that's because she did get some special treatment for a non-straw hat character, getting some extra shine in Whole Cake Island. And a lot of people had provided really good explanations for why she should be a straw hat like her position being a lookout her dream could be the dawn of the new world she could be carrying on the will of pedro she also kind of fits the diversity quota for the straw hats being a mink so when i really looked at carrot seriously as a straw hat candidate the first time in like my third video ever posted on this channel i thought she had a good chance but as time has gone by and the story has gone by especially in wano my thoughts have changed to the point where i now believe there is a very little chance carrot joins as a straw hat now i know that statement alone is gonna upset some people that are still holding on strong for her to be a straw hat and i don't want you guys to misunderstand this okay i actually kind of like carrot still even though she hasn't gotten much shine i'm not one of those people telling carrot to go touch grass but at this point i'm just being realistic she's getting absolutely no attention in wano and especially in onigashima like there's been over a hundred chapters in wano and i cannot think of one memorable carrot moment in wano and i think the most telling part has been onigashima where the straw hats have gotten individual matchups meanwhile carrot has not done a damn thing besides get smacked up by Peril Sparrow. So honestly, I think until something drastically changes, this is going to be the last video where I even speak of Carrot as a candidate because I just don't think she is anymore. I'm gonna pour one out for those of you still holding on strong, but I just don't believe it anymore. But with that said, I do believe the other four candidates are still very strong candidates. And the first one I'm going to talk about is Yamato, who I actually not only think is the most likely, but actually want the most. Now at this point, the Yamato for Straw Hat train is very strong. A lot of people like her character. She also scored very highly in the recent popularity poll but i gotta start off by saying i was a yamato for straw hat og okay i was one of the first people to immediately jump on that train my first yamato for straw hat video was made before we even know who yamato was and i was at like barely over a thousand subscribers so i've been on the train since the beginning and as time has passed and we've learned more about yamato i've believed it even more so first off despite her getting introduced pretty late into wano she's gotten a ton of screen time as a matter of fact i think she's getting screen time not just comparable to the straw hats but actually a lot lot more than most of them. Now, to be fair, I will say that because she is a relatively new character, that's probably part of the reason why she's getting so much screen time. But also because she is getting that much screen time, you have to wonder what Oda's plan is for her. Because at this point, she's clearly being emphasized as a very important character. And given how popular she's become, I don't expect her to just be irrelevant after this arc. And when it comes to Yamato, the number one thing I've always strongly believed in even more than her joining the Straw Hat is that she's going to become a pirate and leave Wano after Wano ends. I don't really think that's a hot take given how much she said she wants to be a pirate and leave Wano and go explore the seas and how her idol is Odin who did the same thing. But there's actually been quite a bit of people that believe that Yamato is staying behind in Wano and is going to be the Shogun or something like that. Which to be honest, I just don't understand. If that is your belief, please go ahead and explain it in the comments. I would love to find out more about this take. Because in my opinion, I see a person that's been abused and trapped in Wano for 28 years. Her number one dream is to go out and become a pirate just like Kazuki Odin did. So when Wano opens his borders and she has the chance to do that even if it isn't with the straw hats I don't see why she wouldn't so the question really to me is does she become a straw hat or join another pirate crew and in my opinion I think there is a good chance that she does become a straw hat given how much emphasis Oda has placed on her especially because one thing Oda has really focused on is developing Yamato and Luffy's connection and that's actually really important when you think about the next straw hat because Luffy has to establish that connection with them for him to invite them on the crew as a matter of fact I would say that's one thing that actually hurts Carrot and 
that she doesn't really have that strong of a connection with Luffy. Like, of course, they spent time with each other, but they never really had like individual moments and really connected. Whereas Yamato and Luffy were definitely already starting to see that. Now, one thing I will say is that a lot of people have pointed out that Luffy calls Yamato by a nickname as opposed to her actual name, which I do think is a good point to make because Luffy only calls his own crew members by their actual names. But I do think there's a pathway for that to change, especially with how much Yamato is struggling with her own identity. And one personal theory I've always had is that by the end of Wano, Yamato is going to come to terms with being herself and not having to be Kazuki Odin. And maybe by then, when she's really figured herself out, that's when Luffy will address her as Yamato. Which now thinking about it really makes sense because Luffy's nickname for Yamato is Yama Bro because Yamato is technically a man and the son of Kaido because she wanted to be Odin. So I feel like at this point, Luffy's only calling her that because she's confused at who she is. So he doesn't know really what to call her. But again, that's just my theory on it. It could be that Luffy never calls Yamato by her name and she doesn't become a straw hat. But one thing I will stick by with Yamato is the fact that she will become a pirate. If I had to pick on the chances of Yamato joining by the end of Wano, I would probably put it around 65 to 70%. But moving on to our next candidates, we're going to talk about two of them and that is Momo and Tama. And I'm mentioning them together because I really believe that it's either both of them or neither of them. Personally, I never loved the idea of Momo and Tama joining as apprentices, but I definitely see the arguments for it. But I think probably the strongest argument for them is the fact that they're going to become apprentices to kind of parallel Shanks and Buggy. So if they're going to end up joining that way, I don't see only one of them joining. So I think as far as both of them goes, it's really going to come down to whether or not Luffy wants apprentices. And I actually think we really haven't talked about this point enough and like what Luffy's belief is in taking on apprentices. Because sure, there is the Roger Pirates parallel of Shanks and Buggy being apprentices, but there's also Shanks, the person that Luffy is inspired by, and he doesn't have any apprentices. In fact, we found that out in chapter one when Shanks refused to take Luffy with him. So honestly, I think whether or not Luffy would take on apprentice is something we should really think about when it comes to Momo and Tama. Because not only did Shanks not take any apprentices, but Luffy, Sabo, and Ace all had that kind of idea as well where they wouldn't leave out to sea until they were 17. Which speaking of Ace, Tama wanted to join him as well and he refused. So I do think there's a good chance that Luffy does refuse them because he doesn't want apprentices and thinks that kids aren't ready. Now the counter argument here would be that Momonosuke did travel with Luffy for a while, but that was also kind of out of necessity in that they had to get him to Wano and protect him. Instead, taking on Momonosuke and Tama as apprentices as actual pirates, that would be kind of a different story. Now, another thing people might point out is that Tama and Momonosuke have proven to be pretty helpful in Onigashima, but I also feel like the powers that they're currently using is very specific to Onigashima. First off, Tama's Kibidangos have worked really well because the Beast Pirates have a bunch of gifters. She could also use the Kibidangos on animals, but like, is she just gonna have a zoo just following her the whole time? Momonosuke, on the other hand, there's an even bigger problem because he's not even a kid anymore. He's a grown ass man. So I don't know where Oda's gonna go with his story. I think if he stays as an adult, it would be really weird if he's still an apprentice. And that dynamic between him and Tama is just not gonna be the same anymore because he's a grown ass man and someone's gonna call the cops. I will say there are some good arguments for it, like Momonosuke wanting to learn more from the Straw Hats, Luffy's leadership, Zoro's swordsmanship, reading the Poneglyphs from Robin. And when it comes to Tama, she has gotten a lot of shine. She's been shown wearing the Straw Hat. She's been on One Piece volume covers. But as of right now, I'm still not really feeling it. I would probably put the likelihood of both of them joining at about 45%. And that gets us to our last candidate who's already a Straw Hat, and that is Vivi. Now to some of you that don't watch next Straw Hat videos religiously like I do, Vivi might come as a surprise. But given what has happened in the Reverie, I think there is a good chance that she does rejoin the Straw Hats. The main theory on this is essentially that Cobra got killed by the world government and there was an attempted assassination on Vivi. So now she has to kind of escape and go somewhere and she can't actually go back to Alabasta because Wapo leaked that she was a pirate with the Straw Hats before. So now she really has no place to go and it could be a good time for her to go back to the Straw Hats who she previously said, if I return, will you accept me as a crewmate? As far as how she gets to Wano, there's actually multiple ways because both Sabo and the Grand Fleet who are both at the Reverie have a Viva card to Luffy. So I think her rejoining the Straw Hats, it makes a lot of sense and there's a clear pathway for her to do so. The only question I really have is whether or not it's the right time for her to do that. I 100% believe that at some point Vivi will rejoin the Straw Hats. I think her making it to Laugh Tale will also make sense so she could find out more about Alabasta's history and her taking part in the final war against the world government would also make sense. But does Vivi joining the Straw Hats to go to Elbath make sense? I'm not really sure. Because at this point the Straw Hats are facing some pretty dangerous enemies and I know that during the time skip Vivi might have been like working on her craft and like getting a little stronger but if she's going to the land of giants I'm gonna be kind of worried. So right now I'm kind of 50-50 on Vivi rejoining the Straw Hats directly after Wano. Like I said I'm 
100% sure that eventually she will join the Straw Hats again. But by the end of Wano, I'm not so sure if that's the perfect time for Vivi to rejoin. So if I had to guess right now, my pick would still be just Yamato joining. But I'm not going to shut the doors on Momonosuke, Tama, or Vivi rejoining. So let's just talk about what it would look like if all four of them joined. And the first thing we have to talk about is crew dynamic. Because right now, the Straw Hats are still at a good size where like everybody kind of works off each other very well. But by adding these four new characters, does that kind of mess things up and overcrowd things? And I think it would do that to an extent because it would be kind of hard to focus on all of these characters. I don't think it would hurt it as much as people might expect because Oda has been balancing a lot of characters like in Dress Rosa and now currently in Wano. So I think as long as Oda dials it back a little bit in terms of extra characters, it wouldn't hurt the crew that much. In fact, it might make Oda focus on the crew a little more and really just have them run the show. And it could be really fun seeing how they all get split up into their own groups and how they all interact with each other. Tama and Yamato in particular could have a really fun relationship because both of them will be kind of freaking out getting outside of Wano for the first time. But also they have such a big power difference. So that would be kind of an interesting contrast. Yamato's age is also kind of interesting with her being 28 years old because in terms of her age, she would kind of fit in with like Frankie and Robin, but she's also kind of like childlike and incredibly innocent. So Yamato really fits into a lot of different groups and it'll be interesting to see how Oda splits everything up because usually when Oda splits up the crews, Sanji is in like this protector role with the weak trio. But now with Yamato part of the crew and also Jinbei, you have more options of people to protect these people. So maybe we'll see Sanji go off on his own missions more and Yamato being like the innocent protector that doesn't understand much, but is like incredibly strong. And overall, I just think there's a lot of different ways Oda could use Yamato with the rest of the crew. With Tama, on the other hand, I think it'd be a lot more straightforward, kind of what we're seeing in Onigashima right now. Most of the time, I would expect her to be with the weak trio and she's kind of already building that bond with Usopp and Nami. Momonosuke, I would say, kind of fits into that same role, but he's also a grown-ass man. So if he's a kid, I see him in that same role as Tama. Maybe from time to time, he'll go with Zoro and Luffy to kind of really learn from them. But if he's a grown-ass man, I really just cannot imagine that dynamic working. Vivi, on the other hand, is the easiest to kind of figure out because she was already a straw hat. She already has that established friendship, so she'll fit right in with everybody. I will be interested to see how she interacts with Robin in particular because they were enemies before. But overall, I think Vivi fits in very easily. With that said, let's talk about what the power structure would look like with these four people joining. And once again, the most interesting discussion here is Yamato. It's been kind of a topic a lot of people in the power scaling community have already talked about, which is how exactly Yamato compares to the monster trio, specifically Zoro and Sanji, because at this point, Luffy is just so far clear of everybody else. But yeah, a lot of people have been talking about this because Yamato has been very impressive so far in the manga. She has a mythical zone devil fruit. She was going one-on-one -on -one with Kaido for a pretty long time and has advanced conquers hockey. Last part in particular is very impressive because very few people in the story have that. So despite the fact that Zoro and Sanji have leveled up a lot, a lot of people do think Yamato is still stronger than both of them. And I think from what we've seen so far, it's kind of hard to argue against that. But if she does become a straw hat and join the straw hats, my belief has always been that the monster trio will never get disrupted. So even if she's stronger than Zoro and Sanji right now, if she joins the crew, I think Zoro and Sanji will level up so they claim their spots back. Because we've seen this discussion time and time again, even most recently when Jinbei joined. A lot of people thought Jinbei would disrupt the monster trio and he surpassed Sanji. But when it came time for the 1v1 fights, it was still Luffy fighting Kaido, Zoro fighting King, and Sanji fighting Queen. So although I think Yamato is an absolute monster, I don't think she'll disrupt the monster trio, which honestly is kind of exciting because that means Sanji and Zoro will have to level up. But at the same time, it would also kind of put Yamato in like this weird position between the monster trio and Jinbei. Unless Jinbei gets like another massive power up, which I don't think is impossible because we didn't really see that much from him in the who's who fight. It was kind of just proving that he's ridiculously strong. But honestly, in Jinbei's next fight, I would really like to see him struggle or maybe like push past his own limits. So that could be one way of Jinbei like kind of catching up to Yamato a little bit and establishing like this middle high tier level. Obviously, there'll still be individual gaps between everybody. I could see it being kind of structured like the monster trio, then Yamato and Jinbei, then Brooke, Frankie, and Robin, and then the weak trio. On top of that though, we could have a whole nother group with Momonosuke, Tama, and Vivi, who at this point, I would honestly put below the weak trio. So the weak trio might not be the weak trio anymore, which kind of would be funny seeing like Chopper, Usopp, and Nami trying to be like the seniors. But obviously when scary things happen, they'll still be scared, but it would kind of still create this new dynamic we've never seen before, seeing the weak trio have to step up another level and really be like the seniors and like the veterans. So as far as the power structure goes, I'm actually kind of intrigued with Vivi, Tama, and Momo joining. But overall, I would still say the structure stays pretty similar. And honestly, I think even in the crazy scenario that we get four new straw hats by the end of Wano, there's a lot of different ways it could still work. As always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to get some One Piece manga with the link in the description. And in one of these hands, I have a coin. If you guess it wrong, you have to like, subscribe, and watch the next video. And the coin is in my left hand. Thank you.